There are a lot of methods companies employ to convince consumers that their product is the best. Most of these are often so subtle that we aren't even aware that we're being influenced. We take a look at 10 more ways that companies trick you on a daily basis, from subtle manipulation to outright psychological warfare. Amazing! Number 10. Scarcity Principle This one is pretty straightforward, and yet it's amazing how often we fall for it. It's the idea that if a store markets something as going out of stock or only being offered for a limited time, that people will naturally want to capitalize on it, even if it's something that they don't actually need. Now, while this may be true of certain seasonal things like mandarin orange chocolates and candy canes, the majority of these ploys are simply there to encourage reckless spending and have little to do with scarcity at all. Nevertheless, in keeping with the mantra of supply and demand, we are naturally inclined to want to process things that are seen as rare. The next time you visit a grocery store and there's a special one-time offer being advertised, try to keep track of whether or not it's still there the next time you come back. Chances are, it's still there. Number 9. Visualizing Dollar Signs and Costs to Wait you wouldn't think something as simple as dropping the dollar sign from the price tag would have an impact on whether or not someone chose to buy a product, but a study out of Cornell found that when looking at many restaurants, there was a notable difference in spending habits. When restaurants got rid of the infamous dollar sign, or any other currency symbol, and simply displayed a number, patrons were far more likely to purchase more expensive items. This also heavily ties into a similar bias where consumers tend to favor items that look cheaper than they actually are. You've probably encountered this firsthand, and it's become one of the more obvious but nevertheless effective ways to encourage spending. An item priced at $2.99 visually appears to us to be a better deal than something priced at $3. Even though the difference between them is only a cent, this doesn't just apply to candy bars and small things, however. Car manufacturers are famous for pitching the same method, marking down prices to look cheaper by reducing numbers to the left. There is also the matter of cost-to-weight ratios. Many products have been experiencing diminished amounts per package, with a price that fails to take into account this loss. In many cases, this involves the convenience of packaging and stores tapping into the inherent laziness of their customers. Think about it, if you're in a stifling mall and just want to buy what's on your grocery list and get out, you're less likely to head to the bulk aisle and spend time measuring and bagging your own food when you can just as easily cruise down another aisle and swipe a prepackaged version of the same product into your cart and keep going. The problem is, these prepackaged items don't often reflect a fair weight to cost ratio and you end up paying more for less. Number 8. Social Proof we are innately herd creatures, meaning that we often contextualize events and experiences according to the people around us. This is something psychologists and marketing agencies have known for decades and has given birth to what is affectionately termed social proof. If we see something that appears to have been advocated by others, we are more likely to make emotional purchases based on that information. Slogans like 9 in 10 people prefer us over competitors may seem like lip service, but when displayed in a way that emphasizes authority, such as on big signs and commercials and through celebrity endorsements, there is a measurable effect in people's willingness to believe and buy accordingly. Number 7. Trustworthiness of Faces Speaking of celebrities, there is a whole algorithm behind the sorts of people that show up on commercials and advertisements, and generally speaking, most of them fit a certain criteria. There is considerable evidence to show that we often make up our minds about the trustworthiness of a person's face in the blink of an eye, between 10 and 33 milliseconds, and that the degree to which we trust a face has a lot to do with its proportions. A study out of New York University found individuals with higher cheekbones and eyebrows, as well as genuine smiles that utilized all the muscles of the face, were statistically viewed as more trustworthy than those with sunken cheeks and furrowed eyebrows. The moral of the story? If you want to sell something, maybe getting a facelift isn't as far-fetched as it sounds. This certainly paid off for Calvin Klein when they piggybacked on the up-and-coming fame of Justin Bieber for their 2015 line, a campaign whose video racked up nearly 10.5 million views and became one of the top-trending topics on Facebook that year. Number 6. Stimulate Your Appetite Restaurants and bars are notorious for priming their customers to purchase more than they normally would. The presence of bar snacks or appetizers like free bread have become so commonplace that we almost take them for granted, 
In fact, you might be a little miffed if you don't get apparently gratis extras at these sorts of establishments. But in reality, the choice of what makes up a bar snack or a complimentary appetizer has been carefully selected to encourage you to make larger expenditures. Bars in particular favor salty snacks like peanuts which make you thirsty, while high-class restaurants encourage you to eat bread to activate your appetite so that you'll be even hungrier when it comes time to choose a menu item. By lining the stomach, the bread will also enable their clientele to drink more, which is beneficial to the restaurant as beverages have the highest profit margins. There is also agreement in the hospitality industry that by offering free and relatively small samples, you are encouraging reciprocity, our psychological tendency to want to pay people back for acts of kindness and generosity. The next time you find yourself unconsciously wanting to tip a large amount, think back to whether or not you were offered a complimentary glass of wine or basket of bread. Number 5. Social Conditioning Understanding how people react to certain stimuli has become the proverbial El Dorado for social savvy marketers, and social conditioning is just one of the many techniques that employees are taught. Although we are predominantly visual creatures, some studies have found that utilizing tactility in interactions, such as having salespeople touch you while demonstrating or explaining a product, makes it far more likely you'll end up buying whatever it is they're selling. Mimicking expressions and gestures also increases empathy and creates a social bond between employee and customer, making you much more sympathetic to a spending spree, a phenomenon known as facial feedback theory. If you've ever noticed a salesperson tapping your shoulder or folding their arms and touching their face when you do the same thing, you've probably been a target of such social conditioning. Additionally, there is evidence that when luxury items are concerned, customers are more inclined to buy a product when the salespeople are rude to them. The idea being that snobbiness fosters the illusion of belonging to an in-crowd. And here we like to think we've grown out of high school cliques and trying to be the cool kid. Number 4. Complimenting Principle Another relatively straightforward sales strategy. This one is favored especially by electronic manufacturers such as Sony and Microsoft. Often a product will be sold for a certain amount, but the additional components such as batteries, remotes, cables, etc. will be sold separately and come with higher than average price tags attached. When purchasing a computer is concerned, this is readily apparent. A computer may be sold for $1,000, but the real income for the store is derived from the installation of software, add-ons, and warranties. Another example I've personally noticed are GoPro batteries. The recommended retail price for GoPro batteries on Amazon is around 20 pounds, which is much more expensive than alternatives like Smaytree who sell two, which store more charge anyways, plus a charger for even less than one official battery. The reason they often get away with it though is because either most people are unaware or they regard them as inferior seeing as third-party batteries aren't under warranty. Either way, it's an insanely high markup. Number 3. Gender-Specific Advertising Let's face it, while there are obvious physical differences between men and women, there are also significant differences in their spending habits. Take razors, for example. Before 1915, shaving of the underarm was relatively unheard of, but the introduction of short-sleeve dresses provided an opportunity for razor companies to cater to yet another demographic, and shaving the legs didn't become popular until the 1930s. Fast forward to today, and razors are still advertised to women, but in the form of basic, easily breakable, simple tone disposables, while men's razors are sleek hardy, futuristic looking, and use language that is geared towards masculinity. Razors were able to find a market not only with both sexes, but the way in which the same product with the same function is advertised differs considerably. In fact, a report by The Times found that overall women's products were 37% more expensive than their male counterparts, which may explain why many women have switched to using men's razors, which are cheaper to buy in bulk and often of a higher quality that lasts longer. But the gender bias on consumer products goes both ways. Male skincare products tend to be hundreds of times more expensive than their female counterparts, such as Nivea moisturizers. Number 2. Arbitrary Expiration Dates we like to think there is an ordered and logical system behind the application of expiration date stickers. The actual usage of expiration dates on food didn't come about until the 1970s, but today there is a consensus that they are meant to tell us when a product is no longer edible. In fact, 
Expiration dates are a bit of a misnomer since they are actually meant to indicate to food purveyors when a food is at its freshest. Products are often quite edible long after their expiration dates, especially in the case of canned or dried goods, but also more unexpected products like medications. This confusion has resulted in a huge amount of food going to waste in North America, with 90% of Americans throwing out food prematurely. The problem is that expiration dates were never implemented as a safety measure, but as a quality measure, meaning that there is no national regulation dictating what expiration dates have to say. While some things like milk or vegetables definitely go bad faster, chances are you've been chucking good food in the waste bin for years. Number 1. Nostalgia and Smells Yes, even the friendliest looking companies may be taking advantage of your childhood memories. That catchy tune that comes in on the intercom while you're perusing the mall, or that barrage of Christmas music during the holidays, it's not just there to add a bit of atmosphere. Several studies have found that appealing to people's sense of nostalgia effectively makes them value money less. This may have to do with the fact that nostalgia fosters a sense of social interconnectedness. When we are reminded of something pleasant in our past, we begin to overvalue our relationships to others, while at the same time devaluing our attachment to other things. If you're in the middle of a mall or store, that other thing may be your credit card. We've also had it drilled into us that smell is the most evocative of the senses when it comes to memory. Grocery outlets are well aware of this and often design their layouts so that smell takes precedence when you walk through the doors. Positioning the flowers and produce section or the bakery near the entrance immediately assaults customers with pleasant smells that stimulate the appetite, encouraging them to buy more. Likewise, when another consumer study experimented by using vanilla scent in a women's clothing store and rose maroc in a men's clothing store, their sales nearly doubled. Our best advice to avoid being manipulated by stores? Bring a clothespin. Our subconscious can be a powerful thing, and though we may not always be aware of what it's doing, it's there to help us navigate the world and our experiences. At the same time, it also makes us an ideal target for companies who know how to exploit our base impulses, biases, and psychological quirks in order to encourage us to buy things we don't need. Can you think of any other hidden or mischievous tactics that the marketing industry uses? or any that we might have missed. Hey, feel free to leave a comment below and let us know. Thanks for watching, be amazed.